One day a youngster was there at home in Iowa with his parents, and then he was gone. We originally broadcast this story by Betty Ann Bowser on a Sunday morning in April of 1983. Johnny Gosh had vanished seven months earlier. Still today, he is gone. Okay, what is your name again? Okay. And do you have a telephone number or anything else that we can, maybe I have our detectives to give you a call? Every time the telephone rings, you know, okay. the heart just pounds out of your chest almost because you're hoping to hear the good, little Dad. voice on the other end saying, Dad. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. What was that? It was a <clears throat> girl from Bend, Oregon that said that she was in a roller skating rink last night and she th swore that she saw a boy that looked just like Johnny. And the reason she said that is that she had just stopped at a truck stop and saw one of our flyers, and she said that it looked just like the boys. We've had calls from every crank in our community, some even long distance, that will call up and s say he's dead and laugh at us on the phone. We've had threats against our two older children. These are some of the things that we live with every day, and it's, it's difficult, it's very difficult. Things are not the same for John and Noreen Gosh. Things never can be the same. Their son is missing. 12-year-old Johnny Gosh vanished on a warm Sunday morning last September while delivering newspapers in this neighborhood in West Des Moines, Iowa. No one saw a kidnapping. No one heard a child scream. Suddenly, two blocks from his home, Johnny was simply gone. I would like to speak directly to the people who are holding our son. Contact us, please. We'll meet your demands. This is a plea for you to release our son. From the beginning, the Goshes said Johnny was abducted. While search parties combed through fields and woods near Johnny's home, the West Des Moines Police Department maintained the child was a runaway. And as is often the case, lacking evidence of a crime, police waited two days to investigate the possibility that Johnny was kidnapped. Is this still being treated as a missing persons case at this point? Uh, yes, it is. You don't think it's a kidnapping, though, do you? I'm not ruling out anything, but I have nothing to indicate that it was a kidnapping. The search for Johnny Gosh did not end with the West Des Moines Police Department. State investigators, the FBI, and private detectives were brought into the case. Hundreds of leads and thousands of reported sightings were checked out. Still, with all of this effort, the Goshes say it wasn't enough. The problem is, is that they thought from the beginning that Johnny was a runaway. They did not want to act like the child had been abducted. And so they just sat back, put their feet up on their desk, shot off their mouth, and really did not uh, get with the program like they should have. The um, police department, not only in this town, but in most towns, will tell you that you don't have a crime until you have evidence of a crime. Literally, they're still telling us that they have no crime. Well, we no longer have a son, do we? Rapport between the Goshes and the police department hit rock bottom when police chief Orville Cooney, now on sick leave, told the Des Moines Register, I don't give a damn what Noreen Gosh has to say. I'm kind of sick of her. 104184, your subject's 1074. Sergeant Lyle McKinney was assigned to the case. Ironically, one of his children is a paper boy in the Goshes' neighborhood. How do you go about finding a little boy who is here one minute and gone the next. Well, uh, in this case, you start talking to the people that saw him last, uh, you know, people in the neighborhood that may have seen something. Uh, uh, the, uh, that morning, you know, people in the area were interviewed. Uh, the information was put out to law enforcement agencies uh, via teletype system. Do you feel the police department has enough personnel on this case? Yes. Right. Do you think it has all along? Yes. 
As you know, the family doesn't necessarily agree with that. Well, you know, it's that's a little different situation. Uh, you know, and I'm not going to comment on, on how the family may feel. Uh, you know, it's not my boy that's missing, therefore I'm not going to put them in my in, in myself in their place. It's a problem, I think, don't you? You know, if it's your kid, it's different when it's your kid. Right. No doubt about that. It's a tough case. It's a very, very tough case. I'm glad I'm not a policeman. I would hate to have this case in any way. I mean, it's there is no evidence. Frank Santiago is a reporter for the Des Moines Register and has covered the case since the beginning. Um, Mrs. Gosh is a very determined woman. And uh, she's going to be determined probably to the end. And I think a lot of people realize this at this time. She's pushing in this direction. The police are over here. They have no place to go. They can't find anything. Come back to Mrs. Gosh and say, we have done this. In fact, there's a question in her mind still whether they're doing anything at all. They'll strike close to home or they're, yeah. they're just not going to become involved. They won't listen, though. No. no. And there's so much of it happening right now. I know. Just in our local area. And I don't think it's just because it's happened to Johnny that we're noticing it. No. There are it was their frustration with the police department that led the Goshes to Bev and Jerry Beckett, themselves parents of a son once abducted and held for 18 months. The Becketts hired a private investigator who found their boy. He is one of several private detectives the Goshes have hired in their search for Johnny. Well, who do they think is going to look for their child if they don't? Well, the police can't. They can only go so far. That's, That's right. it. That's right. You know, you've got to get out there and do it yourself or get a private detective like Danny. Mr. Hawk. Knowing the Becketts found their son gives John and Noreen hope. But they do not just wait and hope. Okay, this is going to be spotted down on Southeast 14th Street. Try to get as many people to donate their services as you can because, you know, that's where we really need the, we really need the cash to pay off the detectives. Private investigators cost money, about $1,000 a week. And to raise it, John and Noreen have established Help Find Johnny Gosh, Inc. The organization, which has branches in Omaha and two other cities, has distributed thousands of flyers of Johnny. Help Find Johnny Gosh, Inc. is keeping up with the detective bills through sales of candy bars and buttons and proceeds from charity events. Okay, now you can go have a good time. I think it's appalling that in this land of wealth and waste, that you have to sell a piece of chocolate to ever hope to find your child again. We have foundations for save the seals, save the whales, save the zoos, save the battleships. What about the children of this country? Have you hugged that child today? We can no longer do that. The Goshes routinely talk to church and civic groups, hoping to spur interest in a state law that would require police departments to treat missing children as kidnap victims in those first few hours after a child disappears. That child is counting on you to continue to look. And if Johnny Gosh did not have his mother and father that believed he was still alive and continued to look for him, how far do you think that anyone else would look if we didn't apply pressure? John and Noreen Gosh do not want sympathy. They do not feel sorry for themselves. We don't have time. There's too much to do. Uh, awareness type of things that we're doing, letters to write. There's always a new agency somewhere to send a picture of Johnny and an explanation as to what's happened. I fill my life with creative, positive things to do to find him. I don't sit around with my thumb in my ear feeling sorry for myself. Every day that goes by that we do not find a dead body, that's Thanksgiving for us. That's a plus. So if we try to look at it that way, it gets us through that day and on to the next. In Johnny's room, there is a suitcase packed neatly with his clothes, waiting for his return. Outside, the front porch light burns 24 hours a day, 
as it has for seven months. The first night that Johnny was missing, somebody flicked off the light, <clears throat> and we decided, hey, Johnny's not home. Turn the light back on. And uh, it's been on ever since. If we see Johnny again, we'll be able to look him in the face and say, Johnny, we literally broke our backs to find you. We love you so much. Johnny Gosh was 11 years old when he disappeared. If he is alive, he will be 15 in November. His parents had an artist draw this picture of what he might look like now. He was 5 foot 7 then. He may be 6 1 now. Noreen Gosh believes Johnny tried to call her one night last February. In three calls, each lasting less than a minute, she said he begged for help. Two weeks ago, another Des Moines newsboy disappeared while delivering Sunday newspapers. Because of a new state law, the Goshes helped push through. The police started looking for Gene Martin right away. He's still missing, too.